Hey everyone, Drew here. In this video, we're gonna look at a pedal that gives you an instant Ampeg 140C sound and claims to make that sound even better. You know, it's that amp that all the death metal bands like Suffocation and Dying Fetus used in the 1990s that's becoming more popular every day now? Well, let's find out in this video if this pedal really does that sound well. Stick around to find out. All right, guys, so I finally got my hands on a void manufacturing pedal. What is void manufacturing, you ask? Well, it's the new name of Joe Anastasio's company, formerly known as Lone Wolf Audio. So I actually spoke with Joe about this on Instagram, and he told me that he has plans to use the Lone Wolf Audio name again in the future for limited release pedals, but in general, he's moving in the direction of using void manufacturing for all of his new releases um, and from what i can gather and from what joe told me he is trying to come up with with new original circuits and new sounds like not uh, emulations of other things that have been created he's trying to focus more on effects for the euro rack platform um, he's going to continue to make guitar effects pedals too so heavy metal riffers don't fret, nothing is going away there at all. This pedal was really intriguing to me because it gives you that classic Ampeg VH140C sound in a box. And let's be honest, not all of us can be like Ryan Fluff or Kyle Bull and own an entire wall of guitar amps. So getting the pedal is a much more cost effective um, and quite frankly convenient way to get these sounds for less money and less physical mass. Let's talk a little bit about what the Ampeg VH140C is. It was a amplifier that was patented in the late 1980s and was in production throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. Bands like Suffocation, Dying Fetus, Gore Guts, and Hell have been purported to use the amp during the 1990s. I think what makes the Ampeg 140C interesting is that it's a solid state guitar amp and it's made to emulate the sound of a tube amp. And it's made by Ampeg, which is a company that primarily makes bass amps. So the fact that they made an amplifier that a lot of uh, new bands at the time in the 90s uh, were catching on to, I, I think is really intriguing and cool. Some interesting history of the Ampeg VH140C is that it was a two channel amp. Um, it has a clean channel with a stereo chorus circuit and a dirty channel which is what the amp is mostly known for and sought after today. The drive channel was actually granted a US patent in 1989 as a solid state amplifier simulating vacuum tube distortion characteristics. I find that to be incredibly interesting because even in 1989, companies were looking for ways to use new technology to be able to emulate tube amp sounds, which is really where we're at today, right? with units like the Axe FX, Kemper, Quad Cortex, Helix. In 1989 though, digital technology was not being relied on heavily to emulate tube amp sounds. And instead, they were still using things like transistors, which had been around for half a century. So I think that's really cool. Even in 1989, they're trying to uh, 
get that tube sound, that tube feel that we all need, you know, like the thing that makes your pant leg kind of rattle a little bit when you're playing guitar. Back in the day, uh, electronic engineers were trying to create products that could do that. What's also very interesting about all of this is that this patent was in place for 20 years, which means that up until 2009, the gain stage consisting of an op amp, two back-to-back -back Zener diodes, and the particular arrangement of transistors and capacitors, I don't know what any of that means, but maybe some of you guys do, all of that stuff could not be used in any other commercial products at all. What's weird about that is in the DIY effects pedals world, copying pedals, um, coming up with your own tube screamer is a really common thing. Everybody has their take on a tube screamer. Pedals are constantly being reverse engineered and rehoused and put with cool graphics and then resold to something else. And I, I think that's kind of an interesting thing. And, and, and I may want to make a video about that in the future. And maybe you guys can let me know, do you think that there should be more laws in place so that pedal companies and pedal manufacturers can't copy each other? Or do you think the present system and the present laws are uh, working just fine. Let me know in the comment section below. As you can probably imagine, the Ampeg VH140C was probably a bit of a departure from what Ampeg normally made at the time in the late 80s. Um, some other notable amps that Ampeg has made over the years, there's even uh, plug-in emulations of these amps, the B15M, the V4B, which is kind of the ultimate uh, hardcore doom amp, right? If you want a really loud, clean, high headroom tube platform, the Ampeg V4B is kind of the original amp that does that. Of course, there are many other options today. I'm also fairly certain that Kurt Ballou from Converge used the V4B as a staple in his sound um, throughout his career, but I will have to look into that and double check. All that being said, Ampeg VH140Cs are going for well over a thousand dollars right now on reverb. That's a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks. I saw one um, listing, fifteen hundred bucks for a freaking solid state amp, right? That's that's how much people are valuing this particular sound. So to me, I'd much rather spend three hundred dollars on a new pedal, just run that into the front of the amp that I have, and let it rip. And now I've got that sound in my studio for recording purposes, or I can put it on my live pedal board. I know it's not the real thing, but Joe puts a lot of work into his pedals and he captures these sounds and finds subtle ways to improve upon those original circuits. And I think that's pretty cool. All right, all that to say, let's finally take a listen to these pedals. Um, I'm gonna be playing my eight string Kiesel through the lick, um, which is what I used to record the track at the beginning. You also heard the lick at the beginning in the song that I made. Um, I'm also gonna play a little bit of bass through this thing so you can hear um, what a bass sounds like through it. Surprisingly, it works well. <laughs> Thank you. 
guys, thank you so much for checking out this video of the Void Manufacturing Lick. I think it's a really great pedal. Not as many bands are using a sound like this, um, and I plan on writing a lot of music with this particular pedal in mind. I'm still a fairly new YouTuber in the sense that I have just been doing this full time starting this summer, which I'm very excited about. So if you could please like this video, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of this video. Was it helpful for you? Maybe let me know what pedal or video you'd like to see me do in the future. I'd greatly appreciate it. So wherever you're at, have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.